Welcome back, Astro Fam. Today we are diving into the ecliptic portal, talking all about the full moon lunar eclipse happening in the zodiac energy of Libra. This is truly our relationship moon of the year. So I'm honored to dive in with you. I am Mandy Rose. I'm a relational astrologer, which essentially means I help you understand the current cosmic weather in an attempt for all of us to have better relationships. And so there's a lot to discuss with this lunar eclipse. Eclipse energy is very potent. It's very volatile. It's, it can be life-changing and it deals a lot with our fate and our destiny. And so we'll be breaking all of that down in today's video. I'll be pulling up the chart a little bit later, giving you the specifics. So if you have your birth chart handy, make sure you grab that. Also, if you have your 2024 Astrology Alchemy Journal, go ahead and open up to page 23. That is our full moon in Libra Eclipse page. You'll see your journal prompts, your ritual, the chakras, crystal, and herbs that you can work with around this time. And of course, a more detailed description of what you could be experiencing around this time. If you still need a copy of this journal, they are available on sale in the description box below. And if you're new here, welcome to my little corner of the internet in my new and full moon videos. Not only do I dive into all the specifics, but I also give you some rituals and activities that you can use to navigate this energy. I break down my favorite five fun facts about the lunation that helps you understand what makes it unique to 2024. And at the end of my videos, I'm going to break down all the rising signs, helping you understand what relationships in your life may be heavily impacted by that newer full moon. And today we're talking about the lunar eclipse. So what relationships or karmic patterns or karmic ties may be cut or severed or released or let go of at the time of this lunar eclipse. So let's kind of start off at the beginning. Let's talk about the basics, the overview, and the energy that we might be feeling as we move into this full moon. So this lunar eclipse is happening specifically on March 25th at 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes, exactly at 3 a.m. So you want to go ahead and adjust for your time zone. The full moon is going to be exact at five degrees of Libra and the sun being directly opposite at five degrees of Aries. Now, because it is an eclipse, we do have this orb of influence. So you want to check your birth chart to see, do you have any planets or specific placements in your chart that is anywhere between two and eight degrees of Libra and two and eight degrees of Aries? If you do, this lunation is going to impact you a little bit more heavily. And if you want to dive in a little bit deeper on what that means or what you can expect or how to navigate this energy on an individual level, I'm happy to do that with you. I do 30 minute sessions um, that we could just kind of break down what is currently going on in the astrology and how it's impacting you specifically. And since we know that eclipses are very potent portals of energy, they come in pairs typically. So we have this full moon lunar eclipse on the 25th and in two weeks on April 8th, we're going to have the new moon solar eclipse in Aries. So they work together. But remember on March 19th, when the sun enters the zodiac energy of Aries on the astrological new year, that is actually when that ecliptic portal starts to open. We can start feeling the effects of this energy. We can feel like time is speeding up. Things are happening faster than ever. Um, you know, experiences in our life kind of come out of left field. Pay attention all the way from March 19th until we get to the lunar eclipse on the 25th. It doesn't necessarily mean that on the 25th, every single person is going to have this dramatic thing happen. It can really happen anywhere in this ecliptic portal. And sometimes it's very, very subtle. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, this truly is our relationship moon of the year. And that is because when we have a full moon in Libra, we're dealing with the energy of Libra, which rules and relates to our partnerships collaborations, intimate friendships, our romantic partners, our marriage partners, people that we have these long-term connections with that we form a bond with. And so not only does Libra rule over partnerships, but the ruling planet of Libra is Venus. And Venus is our life coach ruling over everything that we love. So not just relationships, but also our material possessions, our creative projects, our money and our finances. And so all of these themes and topics can be highlighted at the time of a full moon in Libra. But this year, it is going to be an eclipse, right? And so eclipses bring this potent portal of energy of destiny or karma depending if it's the North Node or the South Node in the Zodiac energy of Libra. And in 2024, it is the South Node that is transiting and traveling through the part of the sky known as Libra where this eclipse is taking place. Anytime we deal with the South Node, we are dealing with cutting things away, releasing, letting go, karma being burned off. And so now as we move into this full moon, which illuminates and highlights things, 
and it's an eclipse, so it's a full moon on steroids, it makes it very, very potent and brings in this element of karma being played out, of things being severed and released so that we can start new, so we can have fresh beginnings once we get to the new moon solar eclipse in two weeks in the zodiac energy of Aries. This can very much be an ending type of energy around our relationships, around some of the things that we love, around some of the ways in which we navigate our energy in connection to someone else. There's so much energy here around people pleasing and codependency and needing to have the opinions of others before making a decision and needing, you know, other people to come along with us on our journey. And that is going to really be cut away. There might be external experiences or your partners may be acting a certain way that essentially becomes the breaking point for you where you say, I can't do this anymore. I need to focus on me or I need this relationship to change in a certain way if it's going to come with me into the future, if it is going to be a part of something I want to hold on to. Now we do have Saturn and Venus and other planets heavily involved at the time of this eclipse, and we'll be pulling that up on the chart when we get to the specifics. But just as a highlight and a preview, we have Venus, who is our ruling planet of this lunation, heavily impacting this energy because she is in connection with Saturn. And Saturn is the disciplinarian, the tough love energy that comes in and says, hey, do you have boundaries? Are you truly committed to this? Do you have rules around this? Is this a foundation that is strong and stable? And if not, like maybe it needs some attention. Maybe we need to fill in the cracks. And so all of this energy is potent as we move into this eclipse. Now, the one thing I want to talk about really quickly, just as a reminder about eclipses, when we get to eclipse season, because we are dealing with the North Node, which is our destiny, think of it as our North Star. Anytime you see the symbol, it's our North Star. It's where we should be looking. It's where we should be focusing. It's the energy and attention of where we are going versus the south node, which is this symbol. And the south node is the past. It's the karma. It's what we're releasing. It's the energy that we are moving away from, the energy being the zodiac sign. And so at the time of this ecliptic portal of Libra, where the south node is, we are moving away from Libra energy, and we are moving towards the north node, the north star, the energy of Aries. And so we have this access that we are balancing ourselves in between to find the harmony, to find the peace, to find the way in which it feels good and pleasurable, since we are dealing with the ruling planet of Venus at this time, for us to move forward, okay? Now, the biggest thing, like I said, around eclipses is it's external circumstances happening to us. So I don't want you moving into the ecliptic portal, making dramatic decisions, um, impulsively breaking up with people, um, feeling like the world is going to end because little things happen. No, what we want to do around eclipses is not exert energy. It's not do anything. Instead, you want to sit back and allow the chips to fall where they may. It is faded. You don't want to push against the door that's not meant to open for you. And you also don't want to be slamming doors that maybe need to stay cracked open. Okay, so just be present, experience the world, experience your relationships for what they are. Let people be who they are. Don't tell your partner to take out the trash and your mom to do this and your friend that they should do that. Like, don't hassle anybody. Allow everyone to be who they are and observe and witness. And through that, there might be experiences that happen that are dramatic and unexpected and life-changing, or there could be subtleties giving you hints, giving you messages, but you're not going to notice them if you're forcing. Instead, receive, allow, and just be during the ecliptic portal. That is my best advice because eclipses are external circumstances happening to us to make us be aware and make decisions and to move forward towards Aries, where the North Node is. So let's just kind of break that down one level deeper into this Aries Libra energy. We are collectively all moving away from Libra energy and all collectively embracing and embodying more Aries energy. Now, where this falls in your unique birth chart is the area of life, Libra, where you are kind of moving away and wrapping things up and letting things go. And in Aries, wherever that falls in your birth chart, is the area of life that you are now paying more attention to, that you are opening new chapters, that you are having more experiences in. 
But collectively, Libra, like I said, rules relationships. And it is about people pleasing and needing to be in a relationship at all costs, even if it's at the detriment of yourself. It is overcompensating. It is, you know, keeping the peace. It is dragging people with you long after they no longer serve you. Aries, where we are going, where we're gearing up in two weeks for that new moon, solar eclipse, stepping into our main character energy is all about autonomy, independence, my needs, my wants, my desires. Aries is I am, Libra is we are. And we are learning to let go of a we if it jeopardizes the me. And that's the big question at this time. So pay attention to external circumstances where you're not allowed to prioritize what you want, what you desire, and people are taking too much from you. And pay attention to where you're caring more about other people's lives than your own and caring more about what other people think than what your heart truly desires. And because eclipses are faded and they're written and they're destined, sometimes we recognize how far we've come off track. And there's these moments, these portals open to really realign us, to get us back into the direction of where our soul is meant to go. And with this being relationship focused, those relationships in our life where maybe we made a wrong turn and maybe we held on for too long, or maybe we forgave someone too much, that might come back up. It might come around. The person might do the same thing again. They promise to change and they haven't. They, um, you know, have not showed up in a way that you've asked them to. Maybe you've been imposing too many expectations. Maybe you've been too forceful. Maybe you're the problem, right? But whatever it is in your relationship dynamic right now, what's not meant to be, it's faded and it's going to come up and it's going to help you see where you're off track where it doesn't feel good anymore, right? This is very Venusian energy. So you can look back, look back to that solar eclipse that we had back in October. That was a new moon solar eclipse in Libra, in the Libra area of your life. Those relationships maybe had an unexpected twist or something came up or something was acknowledged, something new, a new conversation you had with this person, maybe laying down some expectations. Maybe you had a blow up in a fight and it created this new energy or dynamic between you two. Maybe there was a new promise that was made or a new plan or a new person that came into your life. Six months later, now with the lunar eclipse with the full moon illuminated full at its peak, this is a culmination point of that energy where it began. Where is it going? Does it still feel good? Is it in the direction of where my north node is and in the direction I would like to continue? So some of those things may get brought back up, the same fight, the same promise, the same conversation, that new person in your life, right? Um, bringing something up to its full peak. And then you get to make that decision ultimately based on their decisions based on how they're acting and how it feels to you. So with that entire overview, let me give you a couple announcements and then we're going to dive into the top five fun facts, the things that makes this full moon in Libra unique to 2024, which is my favorite part of my video. But before that, I wanted to share that if you are watching this before the astrological new year on March 19th, I'm hosting an astrological new year celebration. It is virtual. It's going to be on zoom. This is my fourth annual event that we've done uh, where we join together with our astro family. We talk about the upcoming astrology. We do a ritual together. The one that I'm leading this year is an I am ritual that's going to help guide us into the version that we want to be as we move through the astrological year from Aries to Pisces. I do prizes and giveaways and all sorts of special things. So if you want access to that Zoom link, you're just going to go to the description box below um, and then just sign up. I'll send you an email with the password and the login and all of that. It is free to join us. It is my gift to you to celebrate the astrological new year wherever you are in the world. So I hope I see you then. And the second thing I wanted to share with you today is the tea that I'm drinking is the Libra tea in honor of the full moon. Our Libra blend is our goddess tea. It has jasmine green tea in it, rose hips, it helps balance the kidneys and the adrenals because that is the organ system that Libra rules over. So around the time of this eclipse, I'll be drinking that Libra tea. However, I will be drinking for the entire Aries season, of course, the Aries blend. This is something I encourage all of my clients and the people in my life to consume 
because it is going to bring that fire into your life. It's going to help you align with the astrological energies. It is chai, it is spicy, it is bold. It's going to help with your blood flow and support because we added in yarrow. Helps with the liver because you know in airy season we tend to get a little hot and heated and anger is stored in the liver. So this is a tea blend to just help you work through the energy, especially around the time of that solar eclipse. But honestly, for the entire Aries season, because not only are we going to have the eclipse, but we're also going to have that Mercury retrograde in Aries, Mercury parking his butt in this energy for over two months instead of just the typical three weeks. So the Aries blend is absolutely yummy and delicious and something that can help you navigate the cosmic weather throughout the entire Aries season. So if you're interested in more information about the Astrological Tea Blend, you can find it in the description box below. I have all 12 zodiac signs, all 12 of them help you tap into the energy of the current cosmic weather, helps you tap into the energies within your own birth chart, your sun sign, your rising sign, and also helps you with the body parts if you're looking for more physical well-being related to the zodiac sign that rules that area of the body. So with all that, let's get into my favorite part of the video, top five fun facts that I have about the full moon in Libra that makes it unique to 2024. Now the first fun fact about this full moon in Libra is that it's the full moon of the year that determines the date of Easter. We call it the Lenten moon. And every single year, Easter on the calendar is determined based on the first full moon of the astrological year. So we have to get to the spring equinox, which is on March 19th this year. The full moon in Libra happens on March 25th. And so the Sunday following the full moon is going to be Easter, which is March 31st. So there's so much more that I can talk about that, um, you know, when it comes to Easter and Lent and astrology and how it's all determined, but that's a topic for another video. So let's move into the second fun fact about the full moon in Libra is that every single year we call it the worm moon. The full moon in March is called the worm moon by the natives because it's the time of year where we can see the earthworms coming out of the soil. Things are thawing. Spring has sprung. We've moved into the spring equinox and we can feel life budding around us again. So we call the full moon in the month of March the worm moon. Now the third fun fact deals with this full moon in Libra being an eclipse. And we have not had an eclipse in the zodiac energy of Libra with the south node here in over 18 years. So this is very pivotal. This is very unique. As we move into the astrological year and the sun being in Aries, this experience of this eclipse is very rare and unique in a way that hasn't happened in 18 and a half years. Which leads me then into the fourth fun fact that this will be the only full moon Libra eclipse in this Libra Aries eclipse cycle. And so this cycle of North Node Aries, South Node Libra, the eclipses back and forth. But in this entire cycle, we are only going to have one full moon lunar eclipse in Libra, meaning we have one opportunity to release, let go, cut away, shed the relationships in our life, the people pleasing, the overanalyzing, the caring too much about others, the overcompensating, the codependency, all these things that energetically tie us to other people. If they are not serving us, they need to go. And also a fun fact that kind of evolves with this one is that we have not had a full moon lunar eclipse in Libra involving the South Node in 18 and a half years. And we won't have another one for another 18 years. So in this 36 year cycle, we've only will have one full moon lunar eclipse involving the South Node, releasing karma, cutting away ties and relationships that don't serve us in this 36 year window. And it's happening on March 25th. So if you had a relationship in your life that has entered in the last 18 and a half years and it doesn't work anymore, this will be the make or break moment. This will be the moment where all of a sudden it's like, we're done. I'm not doing this anymore. I don't want you to come with me into the next 18 and a half years of my life. So this is very pivotal. This is life changing. This is cutting that karmic tie. Now, if you have a relationship that continues, maybe that pattern that goes on and on and on that negative habit is going to break. The cycle is going to break once and for all. So super powerful energy, which then leads me into the fifth fun fact about the full moon lunar eclipse. And that is the understanding that the full moon timing of when it will be exact at 
3 a.m. is different from the timing that you will experience the maximum view of the eclipse because the full moon is its own entity. The moon is full when the sun shines its entirety onto the moon. But the eclipse energy, where we see it eclipsed out, involves the Earth. And so where you are on Earth is going to determine when you see the eclipse in its maximum energy. So interesting to note, the time of the full moon and the time of experiencing the eclipse maximum is not the exact same time. So I just thought that was a fun fact to include for this video. So with that, let's dive into the specifics, grab out your birth chart, let's wrap this all up with a pretty little bow so we know how to navigate this energy by pulling up the chart. The first thing we're gonna always do is find the sun and the moon. We see them opposite each other with the sun at five degrees of Aries, the moon at five degrees of Libra, and the nodes close by at 15 degrees of Aries and 15 degrees of Libra. That's how we know not only is it a full moon, but it's a full moon eclipse. Now, after we've pinpointed where the full moon is, we've realized it's an eclipse, then we always go to the planet who rules this lunation. And because it's happening in Libra, the ruling planet of Libra is Venus. So what is Venus up to at this time? How is she ruling over the experience that we're feeling around the time of this eclipse? Well, Venus is in Pisces. This is good news because she is exalted in Pisces. She loves to be in Pisces. If Pisces deals with dreams and rose-colored glasses and creative projects and the ethereal and knowing no boundaries and I call it the Jesus energy, it's forgiving, it's compassionate, it's loving, it's romantic. Venus loves to be here. She is in her full goddess energy. She is just living her best life. And that's the energy we want to feel around the time of this eclipse, especially if we're cutting away relationships, especially if we're saying, no, thank you. I'm going to choose me because we want to feel like our own goddess. We want to feel like life is pleasurable. We want to dream. We want to have visions that the future is better than the past. We want to step into an energy where we can experience pleasure with partners and with ourself, that we can just be in a state of elation. And this is Venus dancing in Pisces. However, we do have to know next to Venus is Saturn. <laughs> and so we are dealing with this pressure of making a decision, right? Saturn is tough love. Did you do your homework? Are you being responsible? Are you maturing? Are you going to stay stuck here? How's the foundation? Where's your discipline? Where's your commitment level? Like Saturn is the pressure and he's putting pressure on Venus of saying, yo, you want pleasure? You want to feel like a goddess? You want to have your dreams come true? Then we got to make some tough decisions. We got to cut karma, right? Saturn is Lord karma. And there are consequences to how responsible we are or how much we avoid something. Saturn has not been in Pisces, right, in 30 years. So he's here now saying, yo, this area of life where we like to kind of dream and float and put rose colored glasses on, like that's great and all, but right now we got to get a little bit more serious. We got to course correct. And so we're feeling this pressure of making these decisions, of analyzing what doesn't work and ultimately saying, what do I want to commit to for the next 18 and a half years? Because this is my chance to let it go in a way that is fated and destined to where I want to go. Super powerful energy. Now, the other thing that's going on with Venus is she's in this beautiful, harmonious aspect, this sextile with Jupiter. And when the planets are having sex, it is good energy. It is harmonious. It is loving. And Jupiter is our other benefic planet. Jupiter is saying, expand, you know, have faith, be optimistic. Um, there's abundance here. There's blessings here for you. Just get out of your comfort zone. And so this is really adding in to this Venusian energy of saying, I want to be a goddess. I want to prioritize my own needs. I want to move towards my North node, my main character energy. I don't want to drag these relationships with me that don't serve. And the Saturn is saying, it's okay. We can make tough decisions. We can mature. We can evolve. We can move forward, make new boundaries, make new rules for how you want to be loved and who you want to love. And Jupiter is saying, I'll bless you from over here, right? Jupiter is in Taurus, which is ruled by Venus. And Venus is in Pisces, which is ruled by Jupiter. So this is mutual reception. This is them being in each other's home and saying, yo, I want to make your home beautiful. You make my home beautiful. We'll work together and make both homes magical. So there's tough decisions to be made with Saturn in order to make that happen. Now, really mind boggling. Take a second with me to look at this chart. Something I saw that I was like, huh, I wonder where this is going to go. 
Now we have the sun and the moon at five degrees and the nodes at 15 degrees, right? And that is what causes the eclipse. So if you add five plus 15, it equals 20. Now we see that Venus was just at 15 degrees of Pisces. She's now at 16 at the time of the eclipse, but she was just at 15. And Jupiter is actively at 15 degrees of Taurus. So we have the benefic planets at 15, the nodes of destiny at 15, the sun and the moon at five. And we take five plus 15, it equals 20. Guess what planet is at 20 degrees? Uranus. Uranus, where Jupiter is about to run into to create the lottery aspect in the zodiac energy of Taurus that Venus rules as she's the ruler of this lunation saying, cut it away, let it go, have faith, believe that better relationships are coming, that prioritizing yourself will lead to magical things. Uranus is the liberator helping us move forward, but it can come unexpected and it can be shocking and it can feel like this dramatic change, but it's moving us forward to where we want to go, but we're too afraid to go. And this is going to lead me into the activities and rituals that you can do around the time of this eclipse to help you navigate this energy with ease. And that is this quote I put on a post-it note on my mirror that I look at every single day from now until this ecliptic portal closes. And it says, in order to discover new lands, you must be willing to lose sight of the shore. And that's the truth in our life at this time. That is the energy that we're feeling. If you want more of something, you have to let something go. If you want to discover something that is more magical than the life that you currently have, you have to be willing to let go of the life you currently have already lived. And so I hope that inspires you. If you want to put that on a post-it note, it'd be an absolute beautiful ritual or activity to remind you of the direction you're going in this ecliptic portal. The second ritual or activity I would do around this time is to really spend some time alone. Because the North Node is in Aries and the Aries is selfish and Aries prioritizes the me instead of the we, is I would not get all wrapped up in your relationships and what other people are doing or socializing or connecting. I would really just stay in my own lane. Focus on what you want, your habits, your routines that you need to step into, what needs fixing in your life, what needs more attention in your life. Pay attention to you a little bit more around this portal, and that's going to be really helpful for you to determine what relationships you want to spend time with instead of just spending time with them because that's what you always do. So make a conscious effort to go within around this time. And the third thing I would do around the time of this eclipse is to infuse as much pleasure into your life as possible. And pleasure is experienced through the senses. So smelling nice things in your home, I would add in some fresh flowers. It is the spring or diffuse some essential oils that you love. I would visually clean up my space. Libra loves beautiful spaces. I love things organized and color coded and aesthetically pleasing. Pleasing. So I would make whatever you're looking at, at your desk, at home, in your bedroom, whatever, as beautiful as possible. I would really pay attention to what you're wearing and how does that feel on your skin, adding in silk or fur or, you know, different materials and think of that kind of sensory pleasure. I want you to dive into what tastes good, what smells good, what feels good, what looks good. Um, and it infuses as much pleasure into your life as we move through this Venusian energy and the ecliptic portal. It's going to really help you embrace and embody the changes that are coming because you feel good in your body. So with all of that, I'm going to send you so much love and light as we navigate this full moon lunar eclipse happening in Libra. Where in your chart is Libra? Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to get into the rising signs in just a moment. Just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for connecting with me. I love the comments that you leave. I love the feedback that you guys have. Let me know how you're feeling during this astrological new year. Are you excited? Are you nervous? Like what is going on in your life? And if you love this kind of content that I do, focusing on relationships, make sure you subscribe, follow along. In the description box below, you can find not only the astrological journal and the astrology tea collection. You can also find any astrological events that I'm hosting. Thank you guys again. So much love and light.
let's get into the rising sign breakdown. Aries risings, this truly is your relationship moon of the year because this puts the full moon in Libra in your seventh house. And so you are cutting away karmic ties of anyone in your life that does not serve you. Anyone that has been around for a long time, anyone that doesn't feel good anymore, you have been in such a main character selfish season with the North Node in your first house really saying, what about me? How do I want to navigate my life? What do I want to look like? What is my avatar? Trying to figure out your new identity. And this full moon is going to say, who in my life, in my seventh house of deep intimate partnerships does not serve the version of me I want to shine and share with the world. So this is going to really impact all relationships in your life if they are deeply bonded and really assessing which ones aren't going to work anymore. So good luck, Aries Risings. This is going to be make or break for so many of your relationships. Taurus Risings, this puts this full moon in Libra in your sixth house. So this is our area of life of our day to day. What keeps you well? How do you navigate the time you wake up till the time you go to bed? your work-life balance. Now for you, Venus is your primary life coach. So this lunation is going to impact you the most. And so this is looking really at the relationships in your life that serve your overall well-being. You want to look and say, how am I feeling? Because the sun in Aries is in your 12th house. How am I feeling mentally? 12th house. How am I feeling emotionally? How is this affecting my subconscious, you know, beliefs and my trauma and all these things about me when I'm with this person. Do they make me feel good? Do they help me break my limiting beliefs? Do they encourage my positive emotions or do they flood me with more negative emotions? Who do I interact with on a day-to-day -day basis that does not make me feel well? So this is such a full moon that is going to be shaking awake and removing anything that doesn't serve your optimal wellness. This could be coworkers, mentors, counselors, nutritionists, therapists, um, people you work with on a daily basis, like um, clients. Um, it could be the people in your household if you work from home. So really assess those relationships. If they're not meant to be, they're going to be let go at this time. And then you will replace it with people that make you physically feel more well. Gemini Risings, this full moon in Libra happens in your fifth house, which is your romance house. This is your house of fun, of joy, of children, of your own inner child. So we're going to be letting go of relationships that you don't have fun with. This is a time for you to really assess what brings you joy. Where can you be your authentic self? Where can you shine a little bit brighter? Are you going on dates right now? Because maybe you're dating someone and it's just not working out. You're just not able to connect. You don't have the same hobbies. You don't have the same interests. You don't have the same desire for children, whatever it might be. That might be kind of coming to the surface and saying, you know what? This isn't going to work. Now, Gemini Risings, this also really relates to your children. And so maybe you're having some struggles right now with um, an adult grown child or younger children. And there's some karma that's around there. Maybe you guys have been fighting about the same things. Um, they're just kind of not this sense of peace or, or calmness around the relationship. And maybe this is your time to really bring things back into balance and ask yourself, where do I need to focus more on myself? The North Node is an Aries. So this is really about you, despite having children, saying, who are my friends? What does my social life look like? I need to get out and be around people that are more like me, not just my children, not just, you know, um, the people in my life that I'm dating. I need to have friends. And so this is a big energy during this entire ecliptic portal where you're really saying, I need a social circle that gets me, that's like me, and maybe I need to let go and release the energy or attention I'm using for my children or dating partners or people that I don't have fun with. Cancer Risings, it's going to put this full moon in Libra in your fourth house. So we are letting go. We are releasing some karma, some cut ties around family. So really pay attention to your relationships within your family. We're talking about the family you were born into. We're talking about the family you've created. We're talking about friends that have become family. We are talking about ancestors and generational trauma. We are cutting some karma. So this is really exciting. Have you been doing some deeper healing, some lineage healing? Have you been working on a relationship with somebody in your family that hasn't been going well? Maybe something came up six months ago at the new moon solar eclipse in October, and there was a blow up, there was a fight, there was a new promise, maybe someone moved into your home, maybe there was a dynamic, a shift, someone else got into the fight in the family and everyone had to take sides. Whatever happened or is happening around your family, this is a time where a lot of that 
might be ending, might be releasing, might be letting it go and saying, you know what, this energy I'm giving to this is not worth my attention. And instead, the North Node currently is in your career house. It's in you creating your own purpose, your own legacy, deciding how you want to show up in the world, how you want to be seen, how you want to be recognized. And so focusing a little bit more energy and attention on your main character in your career and your purpose, and a little less energy around the family dynamics and what's not serving you. Leo Risings, this puts this full moon, a lunar eclipse in your third house. This is a very very mental moon for you. And so we're dealing with relationships and how you think about them, how you relate to them on an intellectual level, because this full moon is illuminating the third house, which is the mind. It deals a lot with your siblings. It deals with people you network with, that you learn from, that you teach to. Maybe you are a teacher or you're in a position of leadership where you are educating others. Maybe you have someone in your life that acts like a teacher to you. Maybe you're in school. Um, it deals a lot with our siblings, but we're dealing with the kind of mentalness of relationships, the communication, how you're speaking to people, how people are speaking to you, the words that you're using, the language, the tones. And so for you, this is really highlighting the people that you're around and how they make you feel through the way in which they communicate with you and what they teach you and how they expand your mind. Right now, the North Node is in Aries in your ninth house. So this is your time to be really selfish about your energy around your desire to expand, to take energy, to try new things, to get out of your comfort zone, to go on vacations, to travel, to go on retreats, to go back to school, to um, you know try a new activity or adventure that you've always wanted to do. And you have to look at the relationships in your life that are hindering that, that aren't allowing you to expand your horizons. And maybe it's the way people are talking to you that is causing you to believe or to see life through a certain lens that you don't connect with anymore. So this is very mental and communication oriented um, for you, my Leo Risings. Virgo Risings, this puts this full moon lunar eclipse in Libra in your second house. So this is a very money moon for you. And we are looking at the illumination, the karma that needs to be cut, the way in which you are spending your money, sharing your money, saving your money, making your money. If it's not serving you, if it is not in your highest interest, if it's not aligned with your purpose, it's going to go. So you could have a sudden income loss. You could have something in your budget that gets totally blown out of the water. You could have even a material possession that breaks or um, gets taken from you in one way or another. Because essentially what we're doing for you, Virgo Risings, is the North Node, the North Star in Aries, is in your eighth house. So you're meant to be acquiring new assets and new resources through the relationship with other people. So this could be you losing your job and your partner says, don't worry about it. I got you. Go figure out what you want to do instead. This could be maybe you lose a material possession like your car. And then all of a sudden your roommate or your neighbor or someone says, hey, I'll share mine with you until you're ready to get a new one. Right. And this is allowing you to see what relationships in your life are going to show up for you that are willing to share with you, their wealth, their assets, their resources, their time, their energy, their attention. You're focusing on the relationships in your life that you can go a little bit more deeper with, a little bit more intimate with, that you can connect a little bit more below the surface and intertwine that energy in a way that feels good for you. But this is about prioritizing that, right? Main character energy and saying, this is who I want to connect with. So look at the relationships in your life that evolve or blossom or have new opportunities to grow because of what's being taken away for you financially. Libra Risings, this full moon, a lunar eclipse happening in Libra is obviously in your first house. So this is all about you. And this is your identity. This is your physical body. This is your way in which you're showing up into the world. And you're having an identity shift an identity breakdown. Now for you, Venus is your primary life coach. So this lunation is going to impact you the most. Maybe you are changing professions. Maybe you're changing your whole attitude on life. Maybe you're changing your wardrobe. You want to be seen in a different light right now. You want the old version of you to just go away in this new birthing and this new energy to come alive the way that people see you. And so this is a eclipse that is going to really help that come to life. Now, remember, Remember, the North Node in Aries is in your relationship house. So this is still a relationship moon for you, even though the eclipse is happening in the me, me, me house. 
because essentially you are learning to shift your identity to step more into relationships, into partnerships. So maybe it's time for you to say, you know what, this identity I have of being independent, of being single, of taking care of me, of prioritizing myself isn't working. And in order to be in partnership and to be in relationship and to start something new, I have to say, hey, where am I willing to give up a piece of me to become the we? And so this energy and this dynamic. So pay attention at this time, you know, what relationships in your life are calling you forward that want to grow right now, that want to go to the next level and accept and acknowledge that a piece of you has to be left behind in order to step further into that relationship. So it's kind of like this single identity has to go if you want to be married, right? It's kind of that analogy, but can play out in all different relationships. If you have a business partner, right? Maybe you've always done business on your own, but now you want to collaborate and have a business partner. A big identity and version of you has to go, has to be cut so that you can become a partner in business and not a solo entrepreneur. Scorpio risings, this puts this full moon Libra eclipse in your 12th house. So we are talking about the mental health, what's going on behind the scenes. We're talking about the way we talk to ourselves, the way we feel about ourselves. We're dealing with old trauma, old karma. This is happening in your karmic house. So this is gonna illuminate the way in which you are mistreating yourself, where you are undoing yourself, where you are sabotaging yourself, the relationship in your life that you have with you and your own worst enemy, the devil on your shoulder. So we need to address that. We need to knock that off. We need to become aware of it. And we need to acknowledge that anything that's happening around the time of this eclipse is highlighting how we are responsible for our own undoing. Now, remember the North Node is in Aries. And so the direction you're going is really in your overall well-being and people that can support your well-being, people that you can connect with, relationships that are harmonious and beneficial to you and your health that are going to encourage you to get into routines. Maybe it's a doctor, maybe it's a counselor, maybe it's a nutritionist, maybe it's a personal trainer, maybe it's your friends, maybe it's your coworkers, maybe, you know, it's people in your life that you connect with on a regular basis, on a routine basis that are going to bring more vitality and wellness into your life. And that's where you're supposed to be focusing your main character energy, get rid of the devil on your shoulder and your own worst enemy in your mind. And it's going to serve you so well, my Scorpio risings. Sagittarius risings, this puts this full moon lunar eclipse in your 11th house. So we're looking at friendships. We're looking at your social circles. We're looking at people that you connect with, that you are similar to, and it's going to illuminate which one of those has to go at this time. Who are people that are not really your friends, that have not shown up for you, that you overdo, that you overcompensate for, you're always there for them, or people that you care too much about their opinions and they're not allowing you to be yourself. And so this is a big faded change of people that you connect with on a social level. Maybe it's networking groups. Maybe it's, um, you know, people that you see on a regular basis because you're you know, involved in the same clubs or activities or hobbies. And those things are ending. And maybe you're not interested in those things anymore because the North Node in Aries is in your fifth house. So this is new hobbies new ways of entertaining yourself, new ways of having fun, new dating partners that bring new expanded horizons into your life. Maybe you're having a child because the fifth house where Aries is, where the North Node is, is children. And so in order to move forward in this area of life of dating someone new or having a child or starting a new hobby, the people that you hang out with and socialize with and connect with or friends kind of have to get the back burner. And so we're cutting and releasing and letting go of that. Capricorn Risings, this puts this full moon, a lunar eclipse in your 10th house. This is your career space. This is your legacy. This is the title that you're currently called by people. And we're cutting away if it doesn't serve us and any karma that's related to this career sector. And so looking at the relationships in your life of people that don't support your career, maybe it's a boss is leaving, maybe it's someone that you've connected with, a client, a contract, someone that you've been working with for a long time, um, and it's just not working. There's no harmony, there's no peace. Maybe you're doing all the work and they're not you know, giving back and giving you a raise or giving you something that you deserve. So look at the relationships around your career. Um, if they're not meant to be. They're going to go at this time. And remember that the North Node in Aries is calling you towards and focusing more energy on your home and on your family. So instead of giving up all of yourself to your career and to the people you know around your career, it's saying, you know what? I know. I want to go home. I want to focus on my own energy. I want to focus on my family, stepping into your main character era and spending more time with the people you love in your sanctuary. So 
good so good luck capricorn risings because you do have this energy of wanting to be super committed to your work so this might be a little challenging one for you but what's not meant to be will be taken let it be let the chips fall aquarius risings this puts this full moon libra eclipse in your ninth house so we are illuminating and highlighting your area of life when it comes to your beliefs your philosophies and your ability to expand your horizons get out of your comfort zone this eclipse is going to really focus on the relationships in your life that make you play small that don't allow you to expand your mind that don't teach you things that don't go on adventures with you that don't support your belief systems any relationships in your life right now that maybe don't see life through the lens of how you see it, your philosophy or your beliefs might have to go because you're getting very clear on what you want and how you want to experience the next 20 years of your life. And so we're cutting away old beliefs, old thought patterns, um, old experiences, old ways of navigating the world and saying, you know what, I'm believing something new. I see the world in these new light with new glasses on and anyone that doesn't see it that way cannot stay with me. This is not gonna serve me. And you cut that away. And remember the North Node in Aries is in your third house. And this is your area of life related to your mental health. And so this is really about learning new things, asking questions, connecting with people, socializing, finding a teacher, a mentor. Maybe you take all the wisdom and this new experience that you're having and you share it and you become more of a teacher. You start a blog, you start a podcast. Um, and that's all based on this change of mindset, this change of belief, this life experience that you've already gone through. And so the relationships will change as you kind of go from like this um, one version of yourself mentally into a new version of yourself mentally. My Pisces risings, this puts this full moon a lunar eclipse in your eighth house, the house of massive transformation. When the south node eclipses pass through our eighth house, we can feel a lot of karma clearing, a lot of trauma coming to the surface, a lot of subconscious beliefs and triggers and wounds coming up, a lot of intimacy issues. And so a lot of this may be highlighted or acknowledged at this time, but it's allowing you to see it to experience it, to do some deeper work, some deeper healing, to clear out the skeletons in your closet and allow you to essentially connect deeper with yourself and become more vulnerable with others to share on a, on a deeper level with the people in your life. So whatever is coming up at this time, even in relationships, you know, maybe exposing your truths or sharing your skeletons or becoming more vulnerable with your partner, it's going to be able to tie this deeper energy with another person. So really paying attention to how that's playing out in those deeper energetic spaces. Now, remember the North Node is in your second house. So this does bring some lightness and some positivity into your life because we are expanding new horizons, new energy in two weeks when we get to that solar eclipse of new possibilities around making money, around your income, around your budget, maybe acquiring a new material possession that you really want. So focus that energy on how you want to make more money and how you want to take care of yourself and what you love and what you value and allow those dark things to kind of come up, to be cleared, to be purged once and for all. So good luck, Pisces Risings.